Come and get me. Come and get me. That's it. I, I hold no, 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 no regrets. You know, if, if I'd done it again, what I would do differently is I'd have pressure fighters coming at me. Okay. In the camp, we had fighters in the Philly shell, similar to the style that he always fights, or fighters against the ropes, but never fighters, well, we did have fighters coming forward, like with, with that style, the way he eventually went, but that was only in the early rounds. Early rounds, I'm eating guys alive there. It's when I get tired, yeah. that's when I need to bring in that fresh body mm -hmm. who's gonna sit on my chest and let shots fly. And if I'd done that, that, that alone would have made that the easiest fight in my life. Because mm -hmm. make no mistake, Carl, up until, up until like round five, that was the easiest fight in my life. Mm -hmm. He, he, uh, I could see everything he was throwing. I was cracking him easily. It was only when I started fading and he started leaning on me and started coming forward in that Mexican style that I started to fade. And, and that's it, so that's what I would do differently. I'd have people come pressure me when I'm tired instead of early, so. Well, you're always pushing the boundaries with the training and the techniques that you're using. You're at the UFC High Performance Center. You know, we saw you sort of running underwater on treadmills, doing all this crazy stuff. Is there anything from this training camp that you can take into your UFC training camps now, sort of new skills that you learn? I built an incredible engine. Make yeah. no mistake about that. Yeah. Although 30 minutes, is, I, I went 25 minutes, I got into the best shape of my life. So I'm just gonna keep going with it, keep going with it. And then also know that, like in, in this camp, in this camp it was like round one to eight was the, was the fight. And then eight, nine, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, was my, my friends, more people I'm comfortable with, yeah. just to get to the 12th round, because I had to get to the 12th round in sparring comfortably and safely. And if I did, because if I'd done it too early, I could have picked up an injury, lost out on the fight, lost out on the whole event, yeah. um, and, and, and hampered everything. So that was the goal. This time, I'd probably switch it around. I'd have round one to eight, heavy, real, competitive, and then I just have a heavier opponent on me putting the pressure yeah. for the last four rounds, and I just have to survive in there. And I honestly, truly feel if, I, if I'd have done that, I would have been laughing in that fight. But look, you live and learn, that's what, that's what we say. You, we don't, you don't lose, you either, you either win or you learn. Yeah, and that, that saying has, has taken you well through your career so far. We have some water, please. Look. Nah, vodka and orange. <laughs> <laughs> look that, I'm squeezed into this suit. I got this suit fitted about uh, a couple of months ago, and I'm squeezing into is it now. Is this one of the McGregor Augusto? Yeah, this suit. is an August McGregor line. It looks like a, a <laughs> the tartan for the Scots. You know what I mean? I was thinking yeah. about that. That's why I like this one. <laughs> Look, you may have bought a suit. Mayweather's put an eight-foot glass picture of you in his new 19 million home in Beverly Hills. Are you going to reciprocate? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's, it's some house. <laughs> It's some house. What I, what, what I noticed from it, fair play to him at some porch as a $26 million Beverly Hills mansion. But I'm thinking, that house porches, the tax bill off this fight, the tax bill off the previous bill, and 